Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Above all, trust God for healing. Because even when medicine can't do it, even when man can't do it, God can still heal you. He is still a miracle working God. Faith has a language. <laughs> you can hear faith coming out of people's mouth. You can hear fear coming out. You can hear worry, doubt, and unbelief coming out. Faith has a language. Hebrews 4.14 says, hold fast your confession of faith in him. Inasmuch as we have a high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith in him. What is your confession? It's what you say out of your mouth. It's what you declare with your words. Faith doesn't pray for God to deal with the problem and then go to lunch with somebody and talk about the problem as if you're always going to have it. Now, let me just sit down here where I tell you one little thing. Sometimes I got to sit down to tell you all stuff. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> I got I to be your mama right now for a minute. Children. <laughs> If you ever want to see your faith work, you're going to have to totally give up self-pity. Because a lot of the reason why we talk the way we talk about the things we talk about is because we just want somebody to feel sorry for us. You say, well, Joyce, is, is it wrong to vent or to get comfort for a friend? No, but if you need to do it, do it once, get it over with, and then go on. Don't, don't make it a lifetime mission. Amen. And how many of you see that if we've prayed and we've really prayed in faith and we're expecting God and we believe he's working, then at least if we're going to talk about the problem, let's talk about it in a way that sounds like we think that God is involved in it and that he's going to be doing something. Let's don't just talk in a way that's going to try to get people to feel sorry for us. Amen. Faith has a language. I believe you're working. God, I believe you're working. I believe you're working in my children. I believe that you're working. I have prayed. You have heard my prayers. I have the word to base it on, and I refuse to believe that you are not faithful. I will see the end result of my faith. Amen? Yes, we get weary. Yes, we get tired. Yes, we have difficult days. That's why we need each other, and we need things like this to come together, and we need good music, and we need a good church, and we need good friends, because we got enough junk pulling everything out of us. We need to have people to build us up. <laughs> Faith is not based on what we see, think, or feel. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We live by faith and not by sight. For we walk by faith, we regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. With trust and holy fervor, thus we walk not by sight or appearance. You know, I love the story about Abraham, and I won't take time to go to Romans 4 and read it to you, but I love the fact that He didn't ignore his circumstances. He saw them, but he didn't walk by them. Abraham was believing God for an heir, and yet it was totally impossible in the natural for him and Sarah to ever give birth to a child because they were just both too old. They were long past childbearing years, except God had promised. God had promised. And the Bible says that No doubt or unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. Nobody can promise you that doubt and unbelief is not going to come and present itself to you. That's why the, the power of our words are so important. The minute that doubt comes, why not open your mouth and say, I don't believe that. I trust God that he's working. 
The best way to interrupt a bad thought <clears throat> is by saying something positive. I want us to look at Luke chapter 5, the first five verses. This is an account of some of the disciples fishing that I actually get a lot out of. I've had many good sermons off these first five verses. Now it occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee. So get a picture of Jesus standing on the shore of a lake. And he saw two boats that were drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were over on the shore washing their nets. And getting into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon Peter, he requested that it would be drawn a little bit away from the shore. And there's even a reason why he did that. I won't go into detail, but it actually became a sound system. If they got in the right place on the water and the water would carry the sound up to the people, they didn't have the kind of microphones we have, but that was sometimes why he would go out a little bit into the water and preach from a boat. He sat down and continued to teach the crowd from the boat. Verse 4, and when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a haul. Now I want you to watch what happened. And Simon Peter answered him, Master, we have toiled, we have worked all night, we are exhausted, we caught nothing in our nets. So before we even go to the next verse, what is Peter saying? Put out into the deep water. Lord, that's not going to work. <laughs> We've already been out there all night. The fish aren't biting. <laughs> it's like a fisherman who fished all night. They're exhausted. They've had no sleep. They're tired. Washing those nets was a huge job. If they obeyed God, they were going to have to get those nets back out, back out into the water, get them all messed up again. They're looking at more work. And he said, this is not going to work. We're exhausted. We're tired. We've done all this. So in essence, what was Peter saying? I don't think it's going to work. It doesn't, I don't feel like doing it. It's not a good idea. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. He didn't feel like it. He didn't want to. He didn't even think it was going to work. But because God said it, he put his faith in it. And if you read the rest of it, it says, when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, so many, in fact, that their nets were breaking, and they had to signal to their partners who were out in other boats to come and help them bring the catch in. Don't base how long you're going to believe God on what you see, think, or feel. Number six, we've got a long way to go. Dave already told me, I know what you'll do. You'll get as far as you can, then you'll just read the rest of them. So. <laughs> You're not going to care much for this one, so I'll try to get through it quickly. Faith only works along with patience. Sorry. <laughs> Hebrews 6, 11 and 12. But we do strongly and earnestly desire for each one of you to show the same diligence and sincerity all the way through, all the way through in realizing and enjoying the full assurance and development of your hope until the end. So, you know, there's a beginning of faith. It's, it's not so bad when you decide, I'm going to believe God for this. That, that's kind of cool. Yes, I feel hopeful. There's an answer. I'm going to believe God. But then there's day two, three, four, five, year one, two, three, 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, you're not seeing much yet. Now, if you just could start over here and say, I'm going to believe God, fast forward through all this, get down here to the fulfillment, wow, what an exciting life we'd have. But we never just have a beginning and an end without a middle. And a lot of you right now are in the middle of something, and you're not having much fun. You have to be patient. And patience is not waiting. We're all going to wait whether we like it or not. 
Patience is how you act while you wait. It's how we behave while we wait. So you can wait with expectation. You can wait with a good conversation. You can wait and spend your time being a blessing to somebody else. That's a cool thing to do. We're going to get to that point in a minute. <laughs> or we can just, well, just, I'm going to give up. I just can't do this anymore. I'm just going to quit. This is not working. And then you have to go back and start all over again. <laughs> okay, God, I'm going to pray in faith. I believe you can do this. You get two months into it. I just can't stand this anymore. I don't know why this is taking so long. I just quit and give up. Then you got to go all the way back to the beginning again. Come on, is anybody hearing me? How about way up in those very, I see you back in those very back seats. I mean, there are people all the way up in the rafters. Look at that. Way back against the wall up there. How many of you hear what I'm saying up there? I have a tendency to look at the people down here, but I know you guys are there. Amen. I know you're there. <laughs> but see, the good news is, is, even if I didn't know you're there, God knows you're there. <laughs> Woo, that's a good one. Home run for God. Thank you. Patience. Hebrews 6, 15. And so it was that he, Abraham, having waited long and endured patiently, <laughs> realized and obtained in the birth of Isaac a pledge of what God had promised him. Abraham waited 20 years. Joseph was in prison 13 years for something that he didn't even do wrong. It's fun when you're having the dream. Joseph had a dream. He got all excited. He shot his mouth off to his brothers, got into a little pride. Hey, hey, you're going to bow down to me. Like, mm -hmm. Went to dad. Oh, you're going to bow down too, dad. <laughs> <laughs> he needed a trip somewhere on the backside of nowhere. <laughs> Come on. As some of you right now are in the wilderness of your life, and whether you know it or not, it's working some junk out of you that needs to come out before you're going to be ready to have what God has promised you. Come on. And there's no point in despising where you're at. You might as well learn how to enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. I said you need to learn how to enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. Okay. Number seven, faith only works and is energized by love. And this is a 10-part series right here. What kind of a love walk do you have? How much do you study love? How well do you know the scripture on love? How do you treat people? How many people are you mad at? Hmm, I hear those little <laughs> <laughs> Galatians 5, 6. Let's put it up on the screen, please. Faith only works by love. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. But only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. Now, let me tell you what was happening here. Paul was a little bit fed up with the Galatians always talking about circumcision, not circumcised. I'm better than you. I'm circumcised. You're not circumcised. You need to be circumcised. <laughs> I think Paul was saying, just quit being so nitpicky about all the rules and regulations of religion and just get busy loving each other. Come on. It's ridiculous the way different denominations fight and nitpick and shut each other out because we all don't believe exactly the same way. Well, who's right? None of us are 100% right. Not me, not you, not anybody else. We're all doing the best we can for where we're at, and the fruit 
of our lives is more important than anything else. Paul said, just get busy loving each other because faith only works and is energized by love. I don't have time to go there, but Mark chapter 11, have faith in God, pray constantly. When you pray, believe, and if you have anything against anyone, leave it, let it drop, let it go. <laughs> It's talking about faith. Now we get one of the laws of faith. And if you want your faith to work, then you got to not be mad at anybody. Faith only works by love. My goodness, you, you have to work with the Holy Spirit to keep a strong, vibrant love walk. It's not easy to get up every day and get yourself off your mind and think aggressively about what you can do for somebody else. Especially if you've got your faith out here for one of the promises of God, you need a breakthrough, you need help in some area. You're waiting, 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 trying to be patient, trying to be patient. You're so tired of it. Now you got this lady preacher telling you, keep your mouth shut, don't feel sorry for yourself, be positive. I'm so tired of this, tired of this. Now I'm saying, and while you're waiting, forget about yourself, get out and love somebody else. You're like, why did I come here today? So you can finally see your faith work. Number eight, faith is always at rest. <laughs> Hebrews 4, those who have believed God do enter his rest. So I'll just simply say for me, for you, for anybody else, if I say that I'm in faith but I'm upset, then I need to say, well, you know what? My faith is lacking a little bit because if I was really truly in faith, I would be at rest, an internal rest. That rest that knows that God is in control and that he's working on it. Faith needs to be released. It's a force that's in your spirit. And it needs to be released. Remember when I told you in the beginning of this teaching that there was a time in my life when I was only releasing my faith for the forgiveness of my sins and to go to heaven someday when I died. I wasn't releasing my faith in any other area. I wasn't releasing my faith to overcome, from, to be healed from my abusive past. I wasn't releasing my faith to do anything for God. I wasn't releasing my faith to be used by God. I wasn't releasing my faith for finances. We just barely got by all the time. Even though Dave and I have been tithing since the day we got married because he was taught to do that in the church that he grew up in. But you know, you can tithe and tithe and tithe and I believe that you'll get some results. We've all, we've never not been able to pay a bill, but I can tell you what, if you wanna get into the realm that God wants you in, you need to release your faith with your giving. Faith always brings results, number 10. It always brings results. If you don't give up on your faith, if you hold fast your faith, it will bring results. I can't tell you how long it'll take, but it will bring results. In Luke 17, 19, the Bible says your faith has restored you to health. Oh, I wish I had the time to jump all over this, but let me tell you something. If you need to take medicine, take it. If you need to go to the doctor, go. But don't do anything without trusting God to bring healing in your life. I don't believe there's any medicine or any doctor that can help us if we don't have our faith in God to make it work. Jesus is our healer, and I believe that all healing comes from God. There's no healing apart from God. And even the wisdom that the medical profession has today, they got it from God. And it's a good thing he gave it to them or we'd all be dead. I wouldn't go to a doctor without praying about which one to go to. Don't take that medicine without praying that God will bless it and anoint it and make it work. Above all, Trust God for healing. Because even when medicine can't do it, even when man can't do it, God can still heal you. He is still a miracle working God. Number 11, faith protects us from the fiery darts of the enemy. Woo. Ephesians 6 says, lift up the shield of faith. It didn't say drag it around behind you. Come on, as soon as a fiery dart comes at us, the first thing we need to say is, I trust God. I trust God. I believe God. I release my faith, and I believe God. Number 13. 
12. <laughs> you caught me. All right, number 12, we receive all of God's blessings through faith. We're made right with God by faith. We're justified by faith. We're sanctified by faith. We're redeemed by faith. We're forgiven by faith. We do great things for God by faith. If you want to really get an understanding of what can be done by faith, go read Hebrews chapter 11, where it talks about, by faith, Noah built an ark. By faith, Sarah conceived a child. By faith, Rahab the harlot obeyed God and saved the spies when it could have cost her her life. We do things by faith, and there's always a reward. Number 13, faith grows and increases as you use it. As you use it. You may feel right now like you just only have a little bit of faith. Oh, my gosh. When I first started, all the faith I had was to believe God not to go to hell. That's it. Forgive my sins and help me go to heaven. That was it. That's where I was at. Oh, my gosh. I could not even tell you what all has changed in my life from then to now. But every single one of those things, I've had to know the Word of God, release my faith in that area, stand firm, be patient, hold fast my confession, keep being good to other people, trust God for a reward, and wow, am I a long way down the road now from where I started. You say, well, how long have you been at this? Uh, about 37 years. Oh my gosh, I just got saved last week. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Say, well, thank God I'm on my way. Thank God I'm on my way. Number 14, sometimes faith has to fight. 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. 1 Peter 5 says, resist the devil at his onset. Stand firm against him. Why do I mean that faith has to fight? Sometimes, to be honest, you're going to have to use your faith to go after the devil. You have power and authority over all the power the enemy possesses. Luke 10, 19. Now listen, before you shout, listen. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I have given you power and authority over all the power the enemy possesses. The devil only has power. You have power and authority. And the only authority he has is what you give him. Amen? That's another four-part series. And number 15, ha, ha, ha. Faith is the only thing that conquers fear. And fear is so prevalent in the world today. The Bible says that in the last days, men's hearts will fail them for fear. You hear even Christians that have been in the kingdom of God for a long time talking about how afraid they are about the conditions in the world today. Well, I'm not afraid. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'll always have all my creature comforts. If I'm going to be afraid for anything, it's all the people that are lost. So I want to keep working as hard as I can trying to get the good news to them while I can. And I want to be informed and I want to do my part. And I'm not going to stick my head in the ground and act like there's nothing bad going on. But I refuse to be afraid of it. You know why? Because if God has chosen you and I to be alive in this day and hour, then we're up for it. We've got what it takes. Amen. Well, the Bible says that God has given each one of us a measure of faith. And you know, the more we use that faith, the more it will grow. And also we have His grace to help us anytime we step out in faith his grace, His power, His ability comes along to help us be effective in every area of our life. 
You know, I think we need to learn as much as we possibly can about grace because grace is phenomenally amazing. Grace is God's power coming to us free of charge, enabling us to do whatever we need to do in life without any struggle, strain, or effort on our part. Grace is what saves us. Grace forgives us. Grace offers us mercy. Grace truly is amazing. Today we happen to be in Thailand, and this little boy's name is Somded, and he's had some tragic things in his life, but thank God, through your help, he's now living in the children's home here, and his life is looking very bright. His parents both died when he was six in an auto accident, and when they found him to bring him here to the home, he had had severe ear infections, which had caused hearing loss and lots of other problems in his ears. So he's had about two years of medical treatment on his ears, and thank God he can hear fine now. And so thank you for helping us provide homes for Somded and for other little boys and girls like him all around the world. <laughs>